Hi there. Welcome back to the sort of videos in which I'm going to actually prove or derive the emitted variable bias, which comes about from emitting an important variable in your model, which is correlated with one of the independent variables. And we were trying to estimate the causal effect of one year of education on an individual's level of wages in the population. And we derived this particular estimator for um, that particular effect. And this is just the least squares estimator of beta 1p in the population. And in the population, there is some sort of process whereby an individual's level of wages is determined by an individual's level of education and an individual's level of ability, which we have actually neglected to include in this particular regression. So this particular error here, which we have in our sort of formula for beta 1 hat, this sort of UI term here, actually is implicitly containing an individual's level of innate ability because our relationship which we estimated was just wage i is equal to an individual's level of education times beta 1p plus alpha plus this particular error ui. So this ui implicitly because we haven't included an individual's level of innate ability actually contains it and because of that that allows us to rewrite this term including that particular term. We can just sort of substitute in for um, UI using sort of beta 2 times an individual level of innate ability plus this sort of idiosyncratic error VI. So we can rewrite our sum as being equal to beta 1 plus the sum from i equals 1 to n, so across all points in our sample, of education i minus the average level of education times beta 2 times an individual's level of innate ability, plus this sort of idiosyncratic error VI, and we're dividing through by this sort of term here, which I'm just gonna call S of education or squared because it's the sample variance for education. Okay, cool, so we've got this particular term here. In order to evaluate whether our estimator is biased, remember that what we need to do is we need to actually take the expectations of this particular operator. So when we do that, we get that the expectation of beta 1 hat is equal to, well, the expectation of the operator passes straight through this beta 1 term here because it's just a constant. So it equals, let's say, beta 1p. Actually, let's keep it consistent. So that's beta 1p here. So that's just the population parameter. Plus, now we're going to have our sort of sum here on the numerator, which is the sum from i equals 1 to n of the expectation, because the expectations operator is a linear operator, so it passes through the sum, of an individual's level of education minus the average level of education, all times an individual's level of innate ability. And when I do that, I also need to put sort of beta 2 out the front here. And note that we're still going to have on our denominator here, we're still going to have this sort of education, um, S education squared, which is the sample variance of education. But note that in writing it out like this, I've sort of forgotten about this particular term here, which involves VI. And why can I just forget about this term? Well, if I sort of postulate that VI is actually orthogonal to the number of years of education in a sort of population model, then the sort of zero conditional mean assumption, which comes about from gas Markov assumptions, allows me to sort of forget about that term when I take the expectations of it. So it actually disappears when I take the expectations. Okay, so we're nearly there. We've got this sort of expectation of beta one hat is equal to the true population parameter plus beta two times this sort of thing on the right hand side here. But we know that an individual's level of education is likely positively correlated with an individual's level of innate ability. And that's really all this sort of second term is really. It's just the sort of correlation between an individual's level of education and an individual's level of innate ability. And so we can sort of think about this whole second term here as being positive because the numerator is positive and we know that the denominator is positive as well. Furthermore, we know that beta 2, the effect of an individual's level of ability on wages, is also positive. So finally, when we take all these things into account, if I just sort of rub off, rub off some of this stuff, 
we can write out our formula for our sort of bias in our least squares estimator in this particular example. So here we know that we can sort of write the second term here as being equal to beta 1p plus, let's say, beta 2 times some sort of positive um, bias. So let's say bias squared, so that we know that it's a positive quantity. So we know that the expectation of our estimator beta 1 hat is actually equal to the true population parameter plus some sort of positive number. In other words, the expectation of beta 1 hat is greater than beta 1 p. So in other words, our estimator for beta 1 p is upwardly biased. And we prove what we set out to, namely that if we omit an important variable from our regression, then it turns out that we have some sort of bias in our estimator for that particular variable, or for that particular parameter rather.